And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and they were cast in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? And they answered and said unto the king, True, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, Come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. I'm going to ask Brother Ethan to pray for us now. Father in Christ, saying we thank you, Lord, for Brother Jacob. Thank you for the word of God and the power of their end. Father, I'm thankful as we are reminded through the word of God that the fire have no power over these men. And Lord, no matter what we go through, no matter what you lead us into, and Lord, you're still greater than all of it. Father, I pray you bless them, God, ease his nerves, God, give him the touch and the power to live the preach and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit of God tonight. God, he stands where no man will dare stand alone by themselves in their own power, but God, he's totally relied upon you. Therefore, Lord, we pray, God, give him everything he needs to preach this message, to deliver the word of God to the people of God, and do the work in all of our hearts only you can do. And for all these things, we'll thank you and praise you. It's in Christ's name we ask for these things. Amen. Amen. And you can be seated. Thank you for standing. So, we read here in Daniel 3 that after... They got thrown in the furnace that there was a fourth man among them and it said it was like the Son of God but we all know that that was Jesus. And uh, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background on how we got to here first. So if you go back to Daniel 1, uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're all in captivity of Babylon. And I mean, they're all God's people and the Babylonians had them captive. And... uh, while they were captive, of course, they had to eat whatever the Babylonians had to give them because they weren't going to eat any other way. Yeah. But uh, Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, they all decided that they weren't going to defile themselves with what the king Amen. offered to them. Amen. <clears throat> so they stayed faithful to God with that, and Amen. he blessed them with knowledge and wisdom. And he also gave Daniel the ability to understand dreams and visions. <clears throat> and then we go on to chapter 2. King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. It's funny how the Lord lets Daniel understand dreams and stuff, and the king just so happens to have a dream. It's yeah. amazing how the yeah. Lord works sometimes. Yes, sir. <clears throat> but he had a dream of a great image, and it was made of gold and silver and bronze and iron. And Daniel was able to interpret the dream so... He wouldn't get slain, and neither would his friends, because uh, the king decided that if anybody, if nobody could figure out what his dream meant, that they were gonna, they were just gonna die. He was gonna kill them. Right. <clears throat> but the Lord gave Daniel the knowledge and the power to be able to do that. So <clears throat> we go on from there. And the dream, well, the dream, it was about uh, all these great nations, like the nation of Babylon and everything, how they're all gonna pass away. But it says that eventually the kingdom of God, it will come and it will not pass away. It's forever. Then we go on to chapter 3 a little bit more. We go from verse 4 to 6. It talks about uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. He wanted wanted to make his own golden image. And whenever they made the image, they put it up and they wanted people to worship it whenever they had music play. And Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were all faithful to the Lord. And they uh, decided that they weren't going to worship his gods. And they were just going to worship their one true God. And if you didn't worship and you didn't bow down, you were going to get thrown into a fiery furnace. 
And in the face of that, they still decided that they were going to praise God and they weren't going to follow these false idols. Right. And they knew that the Lord would deliver them out of whatever problem and the fiery furnace that they were putting in. They knew that he would be there and they were still going to praise him. Yeah. <clears throat> so my first point here, I've only got two points. The, the name of the message is the fourth one in the fire. Amen. And for the first point I got, it's just we're never alone. Amen. <clears throat> no matter what we're going through, I know sometimes we're going through tough things. Like Brother Corey, for instance, he's been in the hospital 21 days, but he's not alone. Amen. <clears throat> and I can speak from experience that no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, the Lord's going to be with you. With little Brindley over there. Uh, right. Amen. Sorry. Amen. Amen. <laughs> little Brindley back in January. <clears throat> she was sick, and uh, we honestly didn't know. <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> we didn't know how long she was going to make it. But God was there. Yeah, he was yeah, with yeah. us. <clears throat> he touched us. Uh, he brought us out of that, and all we had to do was stay faithful to Him. <clears throat> he touched her, and look at her now. She's yeah. as healthy as can be. She's yeah. growing. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes. <clears throat> and uh, another point to that about not being alone is uh, the Lord already knows what we're going to go through. Uh, he's already been there, in fact, because He knows exactly what's coming for you. Many of the times we have a need, God already knows whatever we're needing. Yes, He does. And uh, I got a little scripture to back that up. In uh, Psalm 34, 7 and 8, it says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesseth is the man that trusteth in him. Amen. <clears throat> so we know that if we trust in him and we believe him, that he's always going to protect us. He's always going to keep us safe no matter what we're going through. <clears throat> He's going to touch us. <clears throat> and then my second point here is uh, we have to be faithful and we had to just have to trust God. Amen. <clears throat> yes, sir. Back when uh, Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and all them, when they were all in captivity, all they had to eat was what the king was offering, but they decided to be faithful to the Lord and they were just going to trust him that he was going to provide for him, and of course he did. And the reason he did is because they were faithful to him. <clears throat> the Lord, if he's going to bless you, he wants you to be faithful. He doesn't want you to just do it so you can get the blessing. He wants you to actually follow him and be faithful to him because he does want to help you. But if you're not faithful to him and you're not doing what he wants, then what's the point of him helping you if you're not going to help him? <clears throat> We have, to, we have to be like Daniel and all of them. We have to, not only did they uh, not partake of the king's meat, <clears throat> they were threatened. Well, actually, let me go here. <clears throat> right before uh, Daniel was going to interpret the dream, they were talking about how all the wise men and them, they were all going to be slain. But Daniel and Shadrach and them, they all had faith that God would provide an answer for whatever the dream was, and that kept them from getting killed again. Right. <clears throat> the Lord blessed them there because they had faith in him. Amen. And then uh, the last bit of faith they had was they were facing literally being thrown into a hot furnace yes. where they would burn up, but they knew that God would protect them just because they were faithful, and right. God did protect them because they were faithful <clears throat> to him. <clears throat> and uh, what I'm trying to say is I know we go through a lot of things, we go through bad things, but all we have to do is trust in God and he's going to deliver you. It might seem like you have nowhere to turn and nowhere to run, nowhere to go, but God's going to touch you and he's going to bless you if you just have faith in him. Amen. <clears throat> I reckon that's about all I've got. I didn't mean to run through it so fast, but that's all the Lord gave me. I know if that's what the Lord gave me, I know he'd bless Bless it, and I feel like he was. <clears throat> we just have to remember that no matter what we're going through, we just have to follow God. We just have to put trust in him. And no matter what you're going through, there's nothing too big for God. Amen. And God will be able to touch you, and he'll be able to help you, and 
get you out of whatever situation as I've heard Ethan call it many times he'll be able to get you out of that situation so Amen. I guess I'll hand it back over to Ethan